battlefields of the future will be more dangerous than ever. In the 21st century, there will be threats to our freedom and security like never before. But will we be ready? Battles will be fought on land and sea, but they will not be won without supremacy in the air. Enter the incredible world of 21st century combat. Air power is the dominant strategic force. It's air power that lets you influence events and respond to events quickly. It's air power that lets you fight a war without putting hundreds of thousands of people on the ground. To date, Air Force F-15s have won more than 150 dogfights against enemy fighters without a single loss. And the Navy F-18 Hornet is widely recognized as the world's best carrier-based fighter bomber. But in the future, neither the F-15 nor the F-18 will be able to survive against deadly enemy anti-aircraft missiles. Surface-to-air missiles, or SAMs, are going to represent the biggest threat. Those very formidable systems developed in Russia or China will have to be taken out of action very quickly in any future conflict. The fighter of the future will need to be stealthy to slip past enemy radar. It must be able to take out anti-aircraft installations. And it must out-dogfight any enemy fighters that get in the way. That future fighter is already here. The F-22 Raptor. The air dominance fighter of the 21st century. Developed by Lockheed Martin, this advanced tactical fighter has been designed to be the first plane to cross enemy lines, clearing the way for all other forces. The F-22 is both an air-to-air -air fighter and an air-to-surface fighter, so it can drop precision weapons. That means it'll be able to go in early in a conflict, knock out all the air defenses that an enemy has, and also take out certain ground targets, and open the door for all the U.S. forces, whether they're ground vehicles or other aircraft, to come in and continue the fight. The development of the F-22 Raptor first began in 1985, when the Air Force requested proposals for an advanced tactical fighter jet to replace the F-15 air superiority fighter. Military planners feared that the F-15 would not be able to counter new air and ground threats on the horizon. The result was the creation of the F-22. The capability of the aircraft is a quantum leap above what exists right now, and it's going to take air power and revolutionize it into a, a whole new world. In the battles of the future, stealth will be critical for all new fighters to avoid being seen by enemy radar. Non-stealthy aircraft just will not survive in the uh, air battles of tomorrow. Stealth technology was created to counter advances in radar. Radar works by sending out radio waves and measuring the amount reflected back to determine the distance, speed, and course of an object. But stealth aircraft are designed with surfaces that deflect radio waves away, making them nearly invisible to radar. The world's first stealth production aircraft was the F-117 Nighthawk. The reason that airplane is faceted is a limitation of the computer technology at the time. It's easier to model a finite number of flat surfaces than it is a bunch of curved surfaces. And while the aircraft was a breakthrough at the time, the facets limited the plane aerodynamically. I just like the firepower. I'm a little kid at heart. I like. I like working on the gun, I like loading all the munitions we load. Uh, when we go TDY anywhere, like to Davis Month or anything like that, we load everything we can get our hands on, and it's, it's entertaining. It's hard work, it keeps me busy, but 
It's fun. Always a welcome sight to U.S. and Allied forces on the ground. This is the A-10 Thunderbolt II, better known to its legions of fans as the Warthog. While it can be equipped with a wide variety of today's most sophisticated weaponry, the Warthog is, and always will be known for one rather distinct feature. This is the gun. Officially known as the GAU-8 Avenger, the gun is the primary weapon system upon which the entire airframe of the A-10 was built. It is essentially a flying cannon providing 30 millimeters worth of American air power. So this is uh, obviously the business end of the 30 millimeter. Uh, here are the rounds right here, so this is the, uh, the, the casing uh, for the round. And these are actually, they stay within the gun because uh, if you were to spit these out, like a lot of times other guns will, uh, so much ballast and the center of gravity of the aircraft will come off so much that so you have to keep it in. Um, a normal combat burst is what we call it. It's a two second uh, squeeze. So with the gun spinning out, that's around 112 rounds for uh, two seconds. With the amount of rounds that we have, which is 1,100, uh, I guess about nine trigger pulls of useful, uh, I guess, combat damage that we can provide. The gun is uh, by far uh, the Hogpod's favorite uh, thing to do. Um, the gun is the most flexible weapon we have, most of the time the most effective. But then we also, at the same time, too, can carry a uh, pretty incredible assortment of different weapons uh, between the Maverick missiles, precision guided uh, munitions, rockets, uh, illumination, stuff we can use at night, and all different sorts of uh, stuff they're constantly building upon in the hog. But um, the gun is still the most uh, effective, flexible weapon we have. One of the distinctive abilities of the gun is the significant amount of firepower it can put into a target in very short order. The GAU-8 is a complex piece of heavy metal consisting of seven rotating barrels, each seven and a half feet long and weighing 70 pounds apiece, with the total gun assembly including the feed system and loaded ammo drum weighing over 4,000 pounds. Airmen working in the aircraft armament systems field are responsible for keeping the weapon system inspected, maintained, and capable of spitting out up to 70 rounds per second. The GAU-8 system holds 1,150 rounds. It fires approximately 3,900 rounds a minute. The first second of fire fires approximately 50 rounds a second, and then from there it accelerates up to 70 rounds a second. One of the best aspects of working on this is hearing back from ground troops where they called it in and uh, the weapon system performed as designed. It's just, it's great to be a part of that. This is the ammunition loading adapter that we use on the 30 millimeter gun on the A-10 Thunderbolt II. Uh, it's commonly referred to as the ALA or the Dragon. The ALA is powered by the aircraft's hydraulic power through a flex drive. It attaches to the aircraft with the load head and we have a CIU that attaches to the ammo can that's delivered by ammo. We normally load uh, 575 rounds per can which adds up to 1150 for the aircraft. And what it does at the same time, we can upload bullets and download bullets. And this times directly to the gun system. One of the training advantages available to A-10s and other aircraft in the Great Lakes region is the proximity of the Grayling Air Gunnery Range in Northern Michigan. A-10 pilots from the 107th Fighter Squadron at Selfridge Air National Guard Base are just a 30 minute flight to the range at Grayling where pilots face realistic and dynamic training scenarios. There, pilots are able to train with joint terminal attack controllers, placing bombs and bullets right on target. It's an awesome target set uh, that we can go up there and play on. They're constantly changing it around as to what their uh, customers' needs are. It prepares you uh, very well because you can go up there, practice it, you know, kind of training around it, and really when you start to uh, fly over in Afghanistan and start to do the stuff that you're practicing training for up there, you're like, oh yeah, I remember doing this up at, uh, up at Grayling a lot of times. For Warthog pilots, maintainers, and their fellow airmen, ensuring this firepower is available when and where needed is at the core of their duty to their state and nation. Uh. The thing I like the most, obviously, is uh, serving the United States uh, military, serving in that capacity, and uh, helping protect the people uh, in America overseas and uh, being a part of that. Our biggest thing that we do uh, as uh, hog pilots, helping out the troops on the ground and uh, you know, providing that aero coverage that they could need at any time.
I'm uh, Dr. Thomas McKenna. I'm a program officer at the Office of Naval Research. So there's substantial losses incurred when you have a major fire, when you can't suppress it at an early stage. SAFER is the uh, shipboard autonomous firefighting robot. And this is a program uh, that's been going on for about five years, basically to develop a humanoid capable of fire suppression. My name is John Farley. I work at the Naval Research Laboratory, and I'm the director of the Shadwell, which is the Navy's fire test ship. If we have a shipboard fire, we have to be able to quickly get it under control and then regain the ship's ability to maintain its fighting mission. You know, we have not only the ship, but we have ordnance on board, and we have a lot of flammable systems on board. Sometimes it's hard to keep the sailors up to the latest as far as training is concerned. Or sometimes they could create an environment and make it worse. Now the robot could be uh, trained and constantly updated to make sure that the conditions are not as bad as what a human could make it. Well, our objectives for the demo on the Shadwell were to show that the, the robot could walk over what was a very uneven floor, that it could uh, orient itself to the fire, that it could autonomously handle the hose, operate the hose, aim the hose, and suppress the fire, which it succeeded in. I'm Brian Latimer. I'm an associate professor at Virginia Tech in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. I think robots are well suited to be sent into those environments and bipedal humanoid robots are particularly good for those applications because even in the tight, confined conditions that you might have inside of structures, these types of robots can uh, be designed to maneuver in those uh, conditions. Uh, SAFER is an electromechanical robot, so it's driven by batteries and all the motors are electrical. So we put a rain gear type suit on the robot just to protect it from those types of uh, basic uh, steam, particulate, and water drop hazards. So we have uh, visible cameras on board the robot. We have something called a LIDAR, which is a rotating laser that gives the location of the points in the field of the view of the robot. And then lastly, we have uh, stereoscopic uh, thermal imaging cameras that the robot uses to uh, detect and locate the position of a fire so they can suppress it. We combine the notion of uh, smart sensors in the spaces, micro flyers that can uh, fly even in smoke, go through those extremely narrow doors that it could locate uh, fires and operate in those hallways even in dense fire smoke. And it succeeded, all those tasks. So today was the first time we came on board uh, an actual Navy ship. We were able to do a lot of things uh, today that, that we hadn't done previously and we have a lot of hope for new advancements in the future. We have some fundamental issues in robotic mobility that we still have to address, as well as uh, working out the human uh, system uh, integration issues. And we'll continue to advance the capability with better and better demonstrations. At the current time, the robot is teleoperated. So you have operators uh, standing off with the computer console. Where we're, we intend to go, is to have a combination of natural language and gesture control. The robot has gone through amazing transition within four years. And I think it's a worthy investment for a long-term project. But it's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of dedication. And we're working towards uh, human robot teams, what we call the hybrid force. Humans and robots working together. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful and you would want other great videos on tech, growing your business and making more money online, subscribe to our channel at Great School and click the bell notification icon so you can stay updated on upcoming videos. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn at Great School or visit us at GreatSchool.com. Have a great time and keep smashing it. Bye.